start recording. Okay, hello everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for uh, Monday, October seventh, twenty twenty four. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. You might ask, what is Circuit Python? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Circuit Python development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it/discord. We hold the meeting in the Circuit Python Dev text channel and the Circuit Python voice channel. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it co coincides with the U.S. holiday. There's a notes doc, and, uh, which I'll talk about more in a minute, and there's a link to a calendar there where you can, view, um, you can view the calendar online or add it to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So as I mentioned, there's a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. Right now it's a Google Doc. You can contribute to this do document uh, before the meeting. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc, so you can add your notes to the following meeting. If you wish to participate but you can't attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. Okay, so this meeting is held in five parts. I'll explain each part as we get to it. And I will start with community news and take a timestamp. Um, so these items come from the Python or microcontrollers newsletter, and I'll talk about that more after I uh, give about a few. So the first item is um, that Python 3.12.7 and 3.13 release candidate 3 are out. Uh, 3.12 is the newest major release of the Python programming language. It contains many new features and optimizations. 3.12 is the latest maintenance release, containing more than 100 bug fixes, etc. since 3.12.6. 3.13.0, release candidate 3, is the final release preview, and they say, no, really, of uh, 3.13. This release is expected to come to become the final 3.13.0 release, barring any crit bugs being discovered. The official release of 3.13.0 is scheduled for Monday. That's today. So maybe it came out. We'll see. Um, and it's interesting that to note that Python 3.13 was delayed because an incremental garbage collector that had been added was removed um, for uh, interesting reasons. And you can read about that in the, in the link in the notes document. Um, the second item we've got is about EuroPython. Uh, the EuroPython 2024 videos and pay playlist is now live, and there's a link to a YouTube playlist where you can watch talks from the EuroPython um, uh, conference. Let me fix some typos here before I forget. There we go. Okay. And uh, finally, um, uh, in hardware news, uh, Tom's Hardware, which is a very extensive hardware review site, has updated their best of lists. They have a list that's the best of RP2040 boards. And there's also best STEM QT, Quick, and Grove add-ons for the Raspberry Pi and Arduino 2024. And both of those would be interesting if you're looking around, you're trying to decide what the heck, which board to pick and maybe what accessories are available. And both those guys look very helpful. All right. So to explain where all these um, items came from, they come from the Python and Microcontrollers weekly newsletter. 
It's a CircuitPython community-run newsletter edited by our, our very own Anne. Um, and it's emailed every Monday. The complete archives can be found on adafruitdaily.com. The newsletter highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, you can um, submit a pull request on GitHub, which is where we keep the, um, the uh, base copy of the newsletter. You can uh, email cpnews at adafruit.com, or you can tag a post on uh, various uh, social media sites with hashtag CircuitPython. All those will uh, get Anne's attention uh, for a possible item to put in the newsletter, and we appreciate everything that you contribute. Okie dokie. All right, the next major section is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Um, this is a quantitative overview of the entire CircuitPython project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. So first of all, overall, um, in the past week we had 21 pull requests merged by nine authors. Some authors that are less familiar are Aggie Nick 2 Diamant3, and A.S. McGill. They may have submitted some things before, but they're not as common as some of the other ones. There are six reviewers. There were 25 issues closed by seven people and 11 opened by 11 people, which is a nice uh, downtick in the number of issues. And um, let me take out this thing about Hacktoberfest. And now let's uh, talk about the core. And Scott, are you able to tell us about the core? Yes, and I did look at Hacktoberfest. They are running this year. Um, and I do feel like we've gotten a few people uh, contributing because of that, which is cool. I haven't heard from anybody that um, we need to do any sorts of tagging to get credit for it. So until that happens, we can just assume it's working out for those hooks. Um, OK, so for the core, we had nine pull requests merged from four different authors. Uh, Diamante is a new person, and I kind of assume a Hacktoberfest person as well, so thanks to them. Um, thanks to Retired Wizard and Lady Ada, who are... Uh, Retired Wizard is an infrequent author, and Lady Ada is an infrequent reviewer, so thanks to them. Uh, we had 23 open pull requests, so we're just under our 25 goal, which it makes it a single page on GitHub. Um, we had 10 closed issues by two people and seven open by seven people, so we're net down three for a total of 742 open issues. Uh, we have eight active milestones. These are used to prioritize work from Adafruit funded folks. Um, we have no open issues on 9.1x, which is our current stable release, but we do have nine open issues for 9.2.0. So uh, some work there. Uh, Dan's been doing a lot of work to get 9.2 out the door, and uh, we're making progress. Um, and I think that's it. We have one issue not assigned a milestone, but uh, Dan's commented that that's already been taken care of. So we are keeping up with the triage. Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, uh, next up <coughs> is uh, the libraries and uh, Tim Foamy guy. Could you tell us about those? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, uh, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had 12 pull requests merged by six different authors. Um, I think these names were mentioned, but just uh, just in case if they weren't the uh, folks, the names that were newer uh, to me, at least to my eye, Aggie Nick 2 and um, A.S. McGill, uh, thanks to those folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors, uh, as well as to all of our other contributors. We had five reviewers this week, thanks to Brent and Tyeth for uh, doing some reviews this week, um, as well as uh, Dan and Scott. We, in terms of the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one this week was 60 days and the newest handful were down at one day. That leaves us at the end of the week with 42 pull requests open. Uh, the oldest one of those is a draft at 781 days. Newest one is one day. Uh, and then issues wise, we had uh, 15 issues closed by five different people with four new issues uh, opened up by four people. So actually net down uh, quite a bit on issues this week. Um, that leaves us with 882 open issues across all those libraries, and there are uh, 97 of those this week that are labeled as good first issue, so that's down a bit. 
all of those can be found listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website that you should head to if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython, um, be it via contributing code yourself or helping us review code that's been contributed. On that page, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing, what you'll find is a list of open PRs and open issues uh, on all of the CircuitPython libraries. The place where we tend to point folks uh, first, who are first getting involved, is uh, take a look through the open PRs, and you can start doing some reviews on those. Just click through uh, to anything that looks interesting to you or that you've got the hardware uh, or the know-how to uh, test out or take a look over the changes. Leave a comment on GitHub letting us know that you took a look and how it went. If you were able to uh, run it on hardware, let us know that as well and, and what you found. Uh, once you get comfortable with that process, if it is something that you enjoy and would like to do more, we can get you leveled up to leave official uh, reviews over on GitHub as well. Um, if you feel like you want to contribute some code, you can, uh, again, at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you can click over to the issues, and it's kind of the same deal. You'll see a big list of the open issues on GitHub. You can click through uh, to anything that is interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, uh, take a look at whatever that issue is, be it a bug fix or a new feature or what have you, and uh, take a crack at implementing it and then submit uh, a PR with your change. If you need help with that process, we've got a guide for contributing uh, to CircuitPython and the libraries using Git and GitHub. We also have folks who are around uh, on the Discord who are more than willing to help you out. Uh, we want everybody to be able to contribute if they want to, no matter what your background or um, skill set is at this time. So uh, if you feel like you'd like to do that, but are uh, feel like you're blocked for some reason, please come say hi on the Discord. Let us know what you're up to, uh, and we'd be happy to help you out. In terms of the uh, library PyPI weekly download stats this week. We are up at uh, 454,687 PyPI downloads this week across the 334 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc, uh, as are the new and uh, updated libraries, if you would like to take a look at those for the week. And that's what we've got for libraries. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Uh, next up is the Blinkist section, which is usually read by Melissa, but she's off for a while. So uh, Jeff's volunteered to read it. Hello, things are pretty quiet on the Blinka front with no pull request activity, no issues activity. There are 109 open issues, so if you are interested in uh, picking up some work on Blinka, you can sure take a look at those. There's a link in the notes document. Uh, downloads wise, people continue to steadily use Blinka with 30,000 PyPI downloads in the last week and nearly 19,000 Py wheels downloads in the last month. And the number of supported boards stands at 146. And that's what I've got for Blinka. OK, thank you, Jeff. OK, our next major section is Hug Reports. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. OK. So I've got two things. Um, thanks to Jeff for a quick fix for a read the docs change that we sort of knew about and should have done something about, but we didn't. And he fixed it really quick. And then also thanks to DMOT3 for cleaning up some technical debt on the properties implementation in CircuitPython core. Uh, that was very helpful. OK, uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thank you. Um, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Snakey Maker Cat for resolving an issue in the display text repo, as well as submitting some display I/O examples for various different sensors. Um, thanks also to Aggie Nick O2 this week for fixing an issue that caused extra empty lines to appear in the uh, if you use the file handler inside the Adafruit logging library, and a group hug uh, for everybody. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next up is um, Jeff. Hi again. I have a group hug and a hug to you, Dan, for quick reviews on that pull request this morning and a hug to my social media. I shared my countdown clock project that I made last week on Mastodon and got a lot of interested people who were sharing it and liking it. So appreciate just kind of feeling a little bit validated by that. Um, and also, uh, I typed this in, in the text chat, but a hug to Foamy Guy. He is working on a re the same read the docs problem uh, across all the libraries. Um, and I hope that's going well. Uh, but thanks for that. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for that. Okay. Next up 
is uh, Snakey Naked Cat. I'll read theirs. Um, in true ADHD fashion, I usually forget to add notes to the meeting document, so this is my perpetual group hub for the best online community. And thank you, Snakey Maker Cat. And now finally, we've got Scott to round off uh, hug reports. Thanks, Dan. Uh, first, a hug report to Apollo N77 and Cosmo uh, 20 for help with Matter from the Matter Integrators Discord that Apollo started. And then also, thank you to Ibu uh, for uh, circuit matter improvements. I, got, I just realized they had three small pull requests to circuit matter, and they're all super helpful documentation things. So thanks to them. All right, thank you. And hold on just a second. Okay, sorry. All right, I'm back with status updates. Um, let me take a timestamp. Uh, status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to the in the weeds section. So I'll start um, and just say just a short thing. I fixed several bugs over the past week for 920, some BLE bugs and some sleep issues, and I've got more bugs to work on. And finally, um, I'm going to probably do another beta soon because we're we, it's been several weeks, and we're beginning to tell people, hey, could you try Absolute Newest instead of the beta to see if you can reproduce whatever problem that they have. Okay, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Stan. Um, I have been continuing work on uh, an update for Adabot to have it test the, uh, the building of the bundles before it commits and push the changes, which ultimately result in the new bundle releases anytime one of the libraries is updated. Um, and in doing so this week, I learned how to uh, call click commands um, programmatically rather than from the command line, which is interesting. Uh, click commands, uh, such as the CircuitPython build tool is what Adabot is using, although it's a general technique that applies to all click stuff. Um, separately, uh, I've been working on some library PR reviews this week for the uh, logging library and display text, and then uh, took a look at the other uh, display I.O. examples for some sensors that were submitted. And then uh, this morning, I looked into that Sphinx um, theme issue, and I have a, a PR out for Adabot that has a patch uh, that hopefully should be um, that hopefully should resolve that. And then uh, I'll add it here in a minute. I forgot to before, but the other thing I have in the works is the Spirit Board uh, project that runs on the Pi Portal, uh, and that's what I am up to. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, next up is Jeff. Hello, there's that mute button. Um, so I found and fixed a DMA bug on the RP2040 that surprisingly didn't seem to affect the RP2350. When uh, starting a PIO background write, there could be a pending DMA on that DMA channel. Uh, and that, like, that flag was lingering from a previous use of that DMA channel. If it was there, the first transmission of that background data would be uh, incomplete because it would immediately be restarted. And after that, the DMA would probably be correct. Um, but if the structure, like if your PIO program, you know, had a, a count and then some number of bits, it could end up off track because of that. Um, I started documenting a project that is somewhat ver verbosely called the CircuitPython Polyphonio Audio FX on the learn system and I'm going to continue on that and once that's done my next project is to create a monophonic version of this that tries to match the old audio FX Adafruit product uh, as closely as possible because um, I think Lamar would really like to retire that product but have a drop-in replacement uh, that would be uh, pretty much straight across upgrade uh, and that's what I'm up to this week thank you all right thank you and uh, next up I'll read uh, Snakey Maker Cats contribution. Um, while reorganizing my electronics, I decided to submit a display I, uh, example PR for every sensor board I found. It was fun. I need more sensors. And 
uh, next. I'm also looking at more issues I can help with and working to publish my first playground note this week describing an Adafruit MagTag CircuitPython project. Okay, thank you, Snakey Maker of Cat. And, uh, and then finally, last but not least again, is Scott. Thanks again, Dan. Um, I'm continuing primarily to work on circuit matter. Uh, I tested it with Apple Home, and I fixed one issue with the encryption that I found. Um, and I'm getting all the way to the point where it says commissioning. It's trying to invoke the commissioning complete command. Unfortunately, it's not seeing my reply. And so it just keeps sending it to me. So I, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. And I uh, have been reviving my old MacBook Pro so that I can try to get some, some logging out of it to see what it's uh, having problems with. Uh, the folks on the Matter Integrators Discord did suggest trying it with the Matter.js implementation, which is uh, very thorough and very uh, well documented. Um, and there, it does get past commissioning after I found another issue. Um, and now it's into discovering what the device is. Um, so there's more work to do there with Matter.js, but um, I'd love to get it uh, working with Apple Home so I can figure out exactly what I need to get working for Apple Home. Um, so mainly circuit matter this week, uh, although I do have three Pico DVI related bugs to look at, and one is actually uh, with Arduino. So I'm gonna look at those three um, either today or tomorrow. We'll see. I might, I might just take a look at the Apple stuff a little bit just to when my brain's fresh and then take a break from it after that. So that's what I'm up to. All right. And uh, sorry, I, the baby update is the baby's not here yet. So, <laughs> but I we are expecting a baby in the next three weeks. So uh, pretty soon I'll be out for four weeks uh, before I'm back again. All right, Scott. Thank you and, and, uh, and thank you and congratulations in advance. But we'll hear more later. All right, and then finally uh, the in the weeds discussion. We have no in the weeds uh, discussion this week. That's for extended discussions. And so we'll just move on to wrapping up today's meeting. Um, I would only note that next week the meeting will be on Tuesday instead of Monday because uh, Monday is a US holiday. So same time, but the next day on Tuesday next week. And that is it for today's meeting. If there's nothing else, I'll stop recording.